Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel, and I have a few interesting stories for you in this particular video, including this one from Crypto Media Outlet U today. XRP Ledger can help banks create stable coins. Uh, Ripple CTO states, and that's David Schwartz, of course, who is also co creator of the XRP Ledger. And so he put out uh, this piece. This is part of Ripple's blog series, Ripple, in Ripple uh, Insights, uh, titled Issuing Stable Coins on the XRP Ledger. And he goes on to talk about why this is functionally important and really ultimately why it's actually really good for XRP. It's also, uh, in my humble opinion, very timely. And actually, David Schwartz said it was timely, too, and I think I know what he's getting at. But my thought, though, was this is rather timely because the, this, <laughs> the XRP ledger, like this, this provides uh, the proof of additional utility opportunities here and with the uh, impending litigation here between the SEC and Ripple hey the, the more we can go in that direction the better I'm just saying I also want to share with you this idea of XRP's digital gold because it's my firm belief that any cryptocurrency that solves a problem that well that's a representation of of value and anything that has value is probably going to have staying power and if it's an asset it deserves to have an open market price and as it increasingly becomes adopted one might think that perhaps the price uh, would go up and I believe that any cryptocurrency that's going to have truly long-term staying power you can think for decades or hundreds of years beyond perhaps that uh, it would be treated kind of like gold. You know, it should have that store of value property. And I believe that XRP fits the mold for that. And so I've got some stories about how today, it's they're talking primarily about Bitcoin, but look, I'm pro Bitcoin too. I, I hold Bitcoin. So I want Bitcoin to do well. I suspect it will uh, will do well indefinitely. But, you know, it's 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 actually supplanting gold. And, and, and I think it's it's... There's indications here, like it's probably verifiably so. So I'm going to share with you the information that I found here. Um, I do want to be clear that I don't have a financial background of any kind. I'm not offering financial advice. And uh, you should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just sharing with you my everyday Joe Schmo opinion because I think it's fun to talk about this stuff as an enthusiast. And I run this YouTube channel purely as a hobby. It is indeed my most favoriteest hobby I've ever had. All right. Um... Let's go ahead and start with this issuing stable coins on the XRP ledger, and this is this is uh, possible as you'll see uh, thanks to a government office. How about this? The OCC last July, the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency (OCC) made a landmark decision allowing financial institutions to custody digital assets for customers and provide banking services for digital asset-oriented businesses. In the months following, the OCC has continued its progressive embrace of the crypto industry and just this week, granting banks permission to contribute to public blockchain supporting stablecoins. While the guidance formally brings blockchain into the U.S. financial system, it's important that banks understand how to build on the benefits of public blockchain networks uh, to issue stablecoins. And so I made a video when all this news came out because there were, there were people out on crypto Twitter saying that this meant it was the end of Ripple, end of XRP, and I made a whole video just, just putting that whole concept in the wood chipper, right where it belongs. Uh, because it was a nonsense idea. And it's good to see David Schwartz coming out here and talking about effectively the potential here. Uh, for for Because really, th there's an opportunity for this to help with the long-term viability of XRP. And he has this little subheading, the case for XRP Ledger. The XRP Ledger is an open source decentralized blockchain technology that provides significant benefits for banks such as scalability, speed, and cost. Financial institutions using it today leverage XR, the XRP ledger for its ability to fully settle transactions for fractions of a penny and in just three to five seconds faster than any other major blockchain. Built for payments, XRP ledger can also be used to support the issuance of stable coins with a unique fungible token functionality called issued currencies. Issued Currencies is designed to be the ideal stablecoin platform, providing simple but rich management functionality for the issuer that makes it easy to create, issue, and manage any asset, including stablecoins. So it makes you it makes you wonder, like, uh, if they're going to be issuing their own stablecoins, isn't that effectively a bank coin? And if so, does that contribute to walled gardens? And if so, 
uh, that see, it's funny to think about it. So like, there's still a path forward for interoperability, but you you might have more if you have more walled gardens. There's a greater need to bridge them, which is kind of an interesting thought here. Um, also, and I'm going to have to check into this, but I know it would, when we talk about issuing assets on the XRP ledgers built into centralized exchange, it actually does require the usage of of XRP. I believe you just have to set up trust lines. Um, I haven't looked into that in some time, so that that may or may not be. If, if for some reason it's not with this with with issued currencies, okay. But uh, that was always my understanding here. So, uh, you know, if there's actual adoption in that direction, again, XRP required. I, but but again, I, I'm going to verify that. But I think that's the case anyway. Uh, now, financial institutions can use issued currencies to issue stable coins on the XRP ledger. Uh, using this functionality, an issuer simply needs to set up an issuing account and choose the configuration options desired for that particular stablecoin. Issued currencies makes this process very straightforward, stable, and highly secure to significantly lower business risks. Uh, by taking the following steps, bank can, it, banks can issue uh, stablecoins via issued currencies. I'm not going to cover that part because it's not necessary to make the points, but it's on your screen if you want to pause and read that, go ahead, or if you want to go to the website yourself. Uh, but I did want to get down to this part because this is where it gets extra interesting to me. He has this uh, little subheading titled Bridging a Multi-Asset Future. The XRP ledger has an integrated decentralized exchange that allows neutral counterparty free digital assets like its native XRP to be seamlessly exchanged to and from issued assets, including stable coins. Among its unique features is its payments interoperability, which enables payments along, among those uh, holding and receiving assets to minimize costs and work seamlessly when sufficient liquidity is available. While neutral assets and stablecoins alike can be used to settle a payment, stablecoins have an issuer as the counterparty that does not allow them to interoperate across payment networks. XRP, on the other hand, can be sent directly without needing a central intermediary making it best suited to bridge two different currencies uh, quickly and efficiently. A built for payments XRP also can be leveraged to conduct complex transactions like foreign exchange or cross-border money transfers. As banks and regulators increasingly shift toward a multi-asset future, understanding the benefits of public blockchain networks becomes critical. And so that's why it's it's always funny, like the, the, in 2021, there are still Bitcoin maxis out there that think it's just gonna be Bitcoin to rule them all. And I'm just sitting here thinking, no, there's an ever increasing need uh, for, uh, for a bridge asset, a jurisdictionless, neutral, uh, decentralized you know, bridge asset with an open market price, which happens to be XRP. Because really, you're looking at you're going to look at it, uh, a world that's just increasingly tokenized. You know, uh, you're going to tokenize all sorts of stuff, including like real estate, for example, works of art. And uh, if you want to be able to move these around in this this uh, newly liquid world, you're going to have to be able to bridge things. There need to be markets created for all of this. And uh, if you're going to have a cryptocurrency be a bridge for that, it better be technologically sufficient. And XRP most certainly is. So we need to see how this unfolds. Uh, here's a headline from you today. Sorry, gold bugs. CNBC's Jim Cramer says it's all going to crypto. This is, I love this stuff. CNBC mad money host Jim Cramer has opined that gold could be under pressure because it's all going into crypto in a recent tweet. The yellow metal is currently down 1.81% after dipping to $1,877 per ounce earlier today. So gold is trading in the red against the backdrop of the ongoing chaos in the U.S., which is a bit dumbfounding since the traditional safe haven is supposed to thrive in chaos. For instance, it was absolutely soaring one year ago during a military confrontation between Iran and the U.S. in early January 2020. Analysts believe that the main culprit is the strengthening U.S. dollar together with rising treasury yields. AB and AMRO Bank's uh, Georgette Bowl, I don't know if I'm saying that, Bowl, Bowl, something like that, uh, recently told Bloomberg that the move was driven by technical factors rather than fundamentals. Um, and so then there's the subheading in 2017. Um, the dominant narrative pushed by the mainstream media was that Bitcoin was a speculative bubble. This time around, the consensus appears to be that it is digital gold and is favored by tech-savvy millennials. Yeah, exactly. And then there was this as well, uh, another piece from uh, Cointelegraph. Experts, gold outflows are pushing Bitcoin higher. 
And, and don't forget, as this happens, this brings more attention to the crypto asset class in general, which certainly includes XRP. It's one of the top cryptocurrencies ranked by market cap. And so it certainly will, I personally believe, uh, get, get some of the benefit here. Um, and according to multiple experts, one possible reason for Bitcoin's remarkable recent price rise are massive investor outflows from another popular inflation hedge, gold. Spot gold swooned over the past week, falling 4.62% to $1,857. The asset previously had been surging in unison with Bitcoin, which is up over 40% from $28,000 lows last week. In a tweet on Friday... Charlie Morris, founder and CIO of ByteTree Asset Management, said that the pullback in gold might be attributable to investors moving to Bitcoin. And check out this quote from this is, this is on Twitter. With bond yields up and inflation expectations down today, gold has taken a hit. This justifies a $50 sell-off, but price is down $120. I'd attribute the excess to flows moving towards Bitcoin. See, look, I've been talking about this. Bitcoin is, to some degree, eating gold's lunch. I don't care what Peter Schiff says about it. I know it hurts his feelings, but his, his little yellow rocks, I know it's metal. It sounds funny to say rocks. His little yellow rocks he's selling, he, you know, it, 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 is, it, it is the case that money is flowing. Look, if money's flowing into the crypto asset class, it could be anywhere else. One of the places it could be uh, would be gold. It's not there. And people, right, right or wrong, are treating it the Bitcoin as digital gold. And I, I, it's to me, it's fine. It, 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 it makes it makes enough sense. Look, I, I've said my piece a number of times on this channel, uh, you know, about you know re regarding underlying utility, this and that. But the market is is pretty well spoken to this point, right? The market has decided purely because Bitcoin was the first that it, it gets to have this store of value without offering any sort of notable additional utility. And I, that, that this must be the case then that standards matter. And I know in life standards do matter and Bitcoin was there first. But still, I, I firmly believe you're going to get that store value from, uh, you know, really any cryptocurrency like XRP, for example, that ends up proving to have long term staying power. But uh, it's going to get freaking wild here. And this is why it's so exciting to be here. Beginning of 2021, we're in a crypto bull market after years of a bear market. I've been waiting for this because most of the time I've been in crypto, it's just been bear territory. And I am uh, continuing to make purchases, diversifying. And uh, it's going to be an exciting 2021. I'm really looking forward to it. I know it's, it's not fun with like the litigation hanging over uh, everyone's head in terms of what's happening with Ripple and the SEC. But even with that, you know, even though you can't know what's going to happen and it's riskier to hold XRP as a result, happy to admit, uh, I, I suspect that, well, at some point, good, good news, hopefully at some point this calendar year about a settlement. And if that happens, if we get that surprise news, I'm willing to bet that there's going to be a rush into XRP, just like there is an exodus when uh, when the, the terrible news broke about the SEC coming after Ripple, I, you, I, I suspect you're going to see the inverse. And if it happens during this bull market, it's going to get nuts. And so that's why I believe, like, I, like I'm, I don't make price predictions. I understand it's risky to hold XRP, and it's more risky now because of the charges. I do understand that. Uh, but it doesn't change my conviction. And I still personally believe that, uh, you know, XRP... This is all going to get settled, and XRP will eventually hit its all-time high and enter a new realm of price discovery. That's my humble opinion. We'll see if I'm right or wrong. And if I'm wrong, maybe I lose everything, but I am highly confident in the position, and I am just going to continue to hold, period. I've made my decision, and you get to make yours. You can buy or sell or hold, whatever you want. I'm not going to tell you what to do, ever. <laughs> That's it for this video. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau.